To the Lord be all the glory and the praise as we're joining in right now. Blessings to everybody. Let's get right into this. We're talking about destroying the principalities that's over your money and releasing wealth gates and favor, loosing it on earth constantly. You have to understand principalities move from generation to generation. They operate con uh, similar to the familiar spirits. They move from generation to generation to keep generations broke, poor, um, never uh, getting out of debt, always borrowing, always needy, always uh, frustrated financially. The job of those principalities is to rob you of the testimonies of Jesus. The job of those principalities is to rob you of the good life, rob you of abundant life, rob you of what the word says is going to happen for you. And the job of those principalities is to suffocate your faith until you start doubting the existence of God's plan. So you'll never walk in it. You never experience it. You never uh, taste of it. Never see that the Lord is good. And you never experience the supernaturality of living in provisional miracles. You destroy those principalities. You destroy those evil spirits that have an agenda to keep you in lack, to keep you in poverty, to keep you without what you're supposed to have, what you've been promised to have. And they keep a veil over your life where you can't see the glory of God in finances. Now, saints, let's go here. Uh, we're doing 91 uh, Mysteries and Miracles of Sowing. Number 38. Seed sowing is not a fundraiser. It's a sunraiser. Seed sowing is not a fundraiser. It's a sunraiser. Sowing, one of the miracles and mysteries of it, is that you unlock sonship authority. You flow as a son. Before you start sowing, you, you operate as a bastard. When you are a non-sower, you operate as if you're an enemy of God. You don't invest in his work. You don't deem his priorities important. You pit yourself first. You pit your agenda first. And you have a, a wicked mentality towards honoring God. Sonship is a part of the transformation that sowing brings. You operate as a son and a son does not beg God as if God is not interested in blessing them. Begging come from not believing. And when you're begging, you actually train your consciousness to believe that God like you suffering. God like you poor. God like you not having nice things. God like you going through hardships, tough times. God like you in debt. God like you without the finer things in life. And see, when you begging, you're actually training up your mind to have a corrupt viewpoint of the father. When people beg God to heal them, if you study their viewpoint, their viewpoint become corrupted. When they beg God to bless them, their viewpoint become corrupted. When they beg God to forgive them, their viewpoint become corrupted. Begging could bring you right back into the slavery of the law. So number 38, sowing is not a fundraiser. It's a sun raiser. Sowing raises up sons 
that will fear God and love God with all their heart, all their strength, all their life, all their might. And it brings them into moving towards God with everything that comes into their hands. They are leaning on his everlasting arms. Let's go to number 30, 39. Sowing, it breaks traditional demons that cause you to reject the word of prosperity, the word of healing, the word of deliverance. Sowing, it breaks traditional demons that makes you walk in unbelief towards the word. So number 39, sowing, it breaks traditional demons that makes you walk in unbelief towards the word. The demons that convince you that the word is not true and it's not possible. The traditional demons that water down the word and make it look like it's not for you or as a thing of the past. It breaks traditional demons that make you reject the word, prosperity, the word of health, the word of deliverance, even the word of perfection. How many of you all could see that? You get delivered from that wrong perception about perfection. You hear people say all the time, we are not perfect. We are not. When you're sowing, it breaks the tradition of uh, that causes you to walk in unbelief towards the word of God. Let's go to number 40. Sowing will not permit the wilderness experience to continue. Let's go to number 40. Sowing will not permit the wilderness experience to continue. You can't remain in the wild when you're sowing. You can't remain in the wild when you're sowing. We have had false sowers as parents. We have had false sowers as people that we looked up to. They told us that they were sowing. But the end of their life showed us they was lying. Because they never received what the word said in the harvest. Number 40, sowing will not permit the wilderness experience to continue. When you're sowing, you're not going to live in the wild, wild west. You're living the wild, wild wealth. Not the wild, wild west, the wild, wild wealth. God will give you a wild experience with his wealth power. Let's go to number 41. Sowing allows you to bless your prophet like your prophet has been blessing you. Let's go to number 41. Sowing allows you to bless your prophet like your prophet been blessing you. There's been a disrespect for preachers of the gospel. People get mad when a preacher is rich. The preacher done laid down his life. The preacher don't always have sex when you having sex. The preacher don't always eat when you eating. The preacher don't always sleep when you sleeping. The preacher don't always enjoy leisure time while you enjoy leisure time. Preacher not always on vacation when you on vacation. Preacher not always traveling when you traveling. And there's been a disrespect on preachers of the gospel. That's why when somebody walk as a sower, God knows that he can make you rich because you know how to treat his friends, his servant, his prophet, his messenger. Sowing allows you to bless your prophet like your prophet been blessing you. It gives you a softness in your heart towards your leader and recognize their sacrifice and you join in and sacrificing towards them as well to help them out. Bring me to number 42. Sowing allows you to be a help meet in your man of God's vision. Sowing allows you to be a help meet 
in your man of God's vision. You are now causing the favor of God to saturate the schedule of your apostle, your leader. Number 42, you are now a helpmeet in your man of God's vision. What, what your man of God is accomplishing, you are now empowering him to accomplish it. God is using you to help him accomplish it. And so you, now you are helpmeet in his vision. Let's go to number 43. Sowing, it will cause you to study the word about wealth and riches. A lot of times your faith don't work for wealth transference and riches transference because you don't have enough word of God in you about it. Ignorance always produces suspicion. If you take a note, write that down. Ignorance produces suspicion. When you are ignorant, things seem suspect. Think about that. When you are ignorant, things seem odd, weird, strange, deceptive, because you ain't got enough word of God in you to recognize that is right. Sowing causes you to study the word of God about, uh, about wealth and riches. You start understanding wealth and riches is a part of God's love system towards me. He displays his love through these avenues. He takes you to the depths of his love through these avenues. He takes you into the passion of his love through these avenues. Let's go to number 44. Sowing trains your imagination to ignore the present storms in your conditions. Number 44, sowing trains your imagination to ignore the present storms in your current condition. When you're sowing, you're training your consciousness, your imagination, not to be a victim of what's currently being displayed to you. You're no longer enslaved to your current environment, your current conditions, your current finances, your current health. Nothing is enslaving you. Number 44, let's go to number 45. When you're sowing, God bring you into his secret treasury and secret governmental assistance program. Number 45, sowing brings you into God's secret treasury and God's secret governmental assistance program. God got his own governmental assistance program. The father has his own governmental assistance. It's higher than anything you ever seen. See, Abraham was on governmental assistance, but God's. So Genesis chapter 13, verse two, he's very rich. Which I, 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 want, I, want, I want to use that in, in number 46. That sowing makes you very rich. But let's go to go back to number 45. Sowing brings you into the secret treasury and secret governmental assistance program of God, of the Father. God has a secret treasury. You know, there's a U.S. treasury where they release checks. God got his secret treasury. True riches, supernatural money is in God's secret treasury. Remember Isaiah 45 verse three, he'll give you the hidden, uh, uh, the hidden riches of secret places, the treasures of darkness. That's all in the secret treasury, the secret 
uh, Treasury and the Secret Governmental Assistance Program. See, when you're sowing, you signing up for this governmental assistance and you always qualify and get the benefits. When you're sowing, you always get the benefits. God don't deny you. When you honor God, he honors you. So let's go to number 46. Sowing, 46, sowing makes you very rich. Sowing makes you very rich. Remember, riches, yes, is a lot of things, but it is unlimited money. It's continuous money. Sowing makes you very rich because remember, God is giving you the very same thing that you have honored him with. God is supplying you the very same thing in which you have expressed your trust towards him with. So he's using the very same thing in which you have showed him, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I love you. Let's go to number 47. Sowing convicts you of scorners that you have allowed close to you. Number 47. Sowing convicts you of scorners that you have allowed close to you. A scorner is someone that mocks God's word. They laugh at scripture. They laugh at the power of God. Sowing shows you disrespectful people. Sowing convicts you of scorners that you have allowed close to you. See, now the Holy Ghost will start showing you, how, how are you saying you're my friend? This person don't even believe in me, my power, my glory. How are you laughing and talking and joking and you up there clowning around with somebody that don't even believe my word? Sowing will convict you of scorners that you have allowed close to you. Let's go to number 48. Sowing allows you to see your children from God's point of view. The plan and destiny for their life is exposed. Sowing allows you to see your children from God's point of view. Verse 40, uh, uh, number 48. God's plan and intent for their life is exposed. When you're sowing, the Lord going to show you who your children are. You're going to know them by the spirit. You're going to know them according to how heaven wanted them to be raised, taught, explained the word to. And you're going to know how to deal with them according to what God is attempting to birth out of them. Sowing going to let you know your children by the spirit. All right. Let's go to number 49. Sowing exposes the demons that your children secretly battle with. When you're sowing, God will show you when their soul is disconnected from him. And during that disconnection, you got to move wisely so you don't end up releasing all in their direction that they don't even receive. Number one, they're not in the place to receive it. It's not interesting. It's just going in one ear out the next. When seeds of God are rejected, it's as if it was never sown. Number 49. Let's go to number 50. Sowing allows you to see your parents by the spirit. You will know their greatness and you will know their weakness. When you're sowing, God will show you your biological parents, whether they was failures, whether they were success stories. And God will warn you of where they faltered so that you yourself will not continue the same like lifestyle. Let's go to number 51. Sowing links you to Abraham's mantle 
for diligence. Sowing links you to Abraham's mantle for diligence. Abraham had a diligence anointing. That means that he could not be stopped. Even when Lot turned against him and Lot went his own way, you never see Abraham saying, oh my gosh, I'm just so hurt. I don't know what to do. Abraham kept on going. Let's go to number 52. Sowing brings you into Abraham's grace for forgiveness. Remember, Abraham walked in great forgiveness. Abraham saw that there was forgiveness that he could release in Lot's direction, Lot and his wife's direction. There was forgiveness. So number 52, there's a forgiveness grace that sowing brings. You'll be able to forgive people that cause great sorrow to your life. Number 52, you'll walk in a forgiveness anointing. I didn't say a stupid anointing. A lot of times we, you, you got to know what forgiveness is. When you forgive somebody, you don't bring them close to you. You let people prove their self. You don't coach them. You don't, you don't encourage them. Forgiveness is something personally you do. You don't call them up to and say, oh, I, I forgive you. How you doing? You want to hang? No. Because you forgiving somebody don't mean that they change. You give them the same access, they do the same thing to you all over again. Forgiveness is you walking in maturity apostolically with dominion and power. The number 52, you're walking in a Abraham grace mantle for forgiveness. Number 53, when you sow in this apostolic glory on you to bind and loose. Let's go to number 53. When you're sow in this apostolic glory on you to bind and loose. You could bind and loose things and there's an authority that builds on you for you to be conscious and quickened about your binding and loosing abilities. So when you're sowing, bind and loose. You say, well, prophet, what do I bind? You bind weariness. You bind lust. You bind impatience. You bind un ingratitude. You ungrateful. You won't even thank God. You just quiet all day with your boring behind and then talking about you got emotional problems because you ain't saying nothing. You don't talk with God. So, of course, of course you're going to be in that place where, where your, 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 your mind not right. So whenever you are sowing, there's an apostolic glory on you to bind and loose. Now, binding is for the demonic. Loosing is for the angelic. When you're loosing is for things also that is already in the plan of God. You lose money. You lose health. You lose joy. You lose peace. You lose angels. You lose ministering spirits. You lose prosperity. You lose investors. You lose protection. Lose the blood of Jesus. Speak the blood of Jesus over everything you have. Let's go to number 54. Sowing is a weapon of your warfare that destroys all of the weapons of Satan's warfare. Watch this here. We in number 54. Sowing is a weapon of your warfare that stops all of Satan's weapon, all the weapons of Satan's warfare. When you're sowing, you shut Satan down. You swallow Satan and, 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 and the things that Satan will throw your way. You eat it. Huh? You break its effectiveness. You shut it down. When you're sowing, it's a weapon of your warfare that destroys all of the weapons of Satan's warfare. Sowing has God's approval on it to shut the satanic kingdom down. Let's go to number 55. When you are sowing, 
you are putting yourself in position for brand new financial stewardship. You know what this means? You telling God I'm in position now for you to trust my ability to obey you with more money. Trust my ability to obey you in storms. Obey you when, when I feel selfish. Obey you when people are trying to scam me. Obey you. Trust my stewardship, Lord. When you're sowing, you pitting yourself in position and telling God to trust your stewardship. There is brand new financial stewardship in sowing. Let's go to number 56. When you are sowing, you unlock discipleship. Discipleship is meekness manifested. We're in number 56. When you're sowing, you are activating discipleship and discipleship is meekness manifested. Discipleship is so important. Remember, discipleship is the posture that you come into to receive power. The baptism of fire. Which I want to talk about in number 57. When you're sowing, the baptism of fire comes on your life in different segments of your continual sowing. Oh my gosh. Number 57. When you saw in the baptism of fire from the Holy Ghost, it comes on your life in different segments of your sowing. So I want you to see this. Sometimes you'll be sowing, you'll be sowing, baptism of fire, hit. You're in that dispensation. You're sowing, you're sowing, baptism of fire. What God keep baptizing you with fire because as a result of that, your heart burns within you to honor God. See, some of you all never recognize and identify the baptism of fire that was at work. That's why your heart burns within you to honor God. Your heart burns within you to name your seed. Your heart burns within you to keep God first in your finances because you have a baptism of fire that's on you. I received the baptism of fire to honor God. I received the baptism of fire to be a cheerful giver. That's number 57. Number 56, let me go back there. The discipleship that you activate, it causes you to be taught of God's ways. That meekness causes you to inherit the earth. That means that the earth will be your place of enjoyment. On earth, you'll experience good things. Let's go to number 58. Sowing makes patient power. Take its highest level of expression. Sowing makes patient power take its highest level of expression. This number, what, 58? 58? When you're sowing, you're going to cause patient power. There's patience power. It take its highest level of expression. So whereas you was a compulsive person, an impatient person, an anxious person, you subdue anxiety through sowing. You're retraining your mind to trust God constantly. Let's go to number 59. When you're sowing, you're able to look at Jesus like Mary Magdalene looked at Jesus. Let's go to number 59. When you're sowing, you're able to look at Jesus like Mary Magdalene looked at Jesus. Viewpoint, perception, perspective, honor, respect, dignity, submission, loyalty, faithfulness, continuance. You're able to look at Jesus in the proper glory. That's number 59. Number 60. Sowing makes you a certain woman. Number 60. Sowing makes you a certain woman. 
I think that's Luke chapter eight that said that there was certain woman that sold their money, large money into Jesus so that he can go from village to village preaching the gospel. They were certain women because they carried the honor power of God. They honored him. Everywhere he went, they empowered him to travel. Everything that he was able to accomplish, they made it possible. They fed Jesus, made sure Jesus had no lack, no issues, no blockage, no hindrance. They made sure that they worked so that Jesus would have provision to reach who he was supposed to reach. These women did not care about who laughed at them because they had the last laugh. God's favor and God's spirit and God's word was eternally working for them and working in them. And they had unstoppable and eternal access to God the Father. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go to number 61. Sowing allows the wealth gates to wrap itself around your city for your own sake. You Listen, and you, you say, prophet, well, why are you talking about my whole city? My city ain't saved. Listen, but men shall give into your bosom. God bring everybody underneath the system of wealth gates so that you could prosper. Everybody in your region is subject to the possibility of blessing you. Oh, you got to think like that. See, some of y'all don't think like that. You don't understand what I'm talking about. Number 61, sowing allows the wealth gates to wrap itself around your city for your own sake. God will, will, will put an order out for wealth gates to work for you where you live. See, I want you to see this. The wealth gates, they carry another system of life that's greater, bigger, and more beautiful than what you have experienced on earth. Wealth gates. Let's go to number 62. God will open your eyes to see wealth gates first in your imagination. He will show you Pictures of things that's in the wealth gates. Did you know that before I met Dr. Mike Murdoch, I had a vision and in the vision, there was a little angel called the angel of promise. And I talked about it later on, years later. There was an uh, angel called the angel of promise. And the angel of promise was carrying all type of things. Houses. Lands. Events. Connections, relationships, associates. Decisions. The angel of promise. Whoa. Now I want to declare this over some of my partners right now. I decree and I declare the angels of promise over your life. I speak that over your life and I release. Angel of promise, go forth and minister to the sowers in my ministry, to the people that honor me. Angel of promise, go and work for them. Sowing opens your eyes to see What's in the wealth gates? You have encounters prophetically with the wealth gates. You'll be a seer of the wealth gates. Number 63. When you are sowing, praise and thanksgiving angels are in your proximity waiting for you to operate with them. <sighs> Number 63, when you're sowing, 
Praise and thanksgiving angels are in your proximity, waiting for you to operate with them. They want you to operate with them. Number 63, you going to have to engage these praise and thanksgiving angels. You say, prophet, how do I engage them? You start praising God after you sow, before you sow, when you sow. You got to stay in continual praise and thanksgiving before God. And listen, you're in the glory of praising God and you're in the effectiveness of praising God when you could visualize in your mind his reaction. You're going to have to labor in praise and thanksgiving so that you can understand the reaction and even uh, perceive the praise and thanksgiving angels. Let's go to number 64. When you're sowing, your seed is going to bring harvests to you in the new heaven and new earth. Your sowing is not only living to the extension of earth. Your sowing is living into the extension of eternity. The new heaven and new earth will have rewards for your seeds today. Sowing brings you into eternal rewards that you'll get to taste of and benefit from for all eternity. Let's go to number 65. When you're sowing, you are decapitating familiar spirits and the strategies they use for you to backslide. Mm, 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 mm. Number 65. When you're sowing, you're decapitating familiar spirits and the strategies that they use for you to backslide. Sowing takes authority over backsliding devils. When you're sowing, you take authority over backsliding evil spirits, familiar spirits that already done succeeded against other family members. Can it succeed against you? Number 66, when you're sowing, you destroy the dog realm in your reactions. Let me, let me show you something. The word says, do not give what is holy to dogs because dogs are dogmatic. Dogs will dog you out. When you're sowing, you are removing that victimization, that power to operate like a dog. Remember, a dog returns back to its vomit. A dog leaves God's system and chooses to kiss the devil's feet. When, when you're sowing, you destroy the dog realm in your reactions. You don't dog God out. Let's go to number 67. When you are sowing, God will challenge you To memorize the word throughout your day and before you go to sleep. Listen to what I'm saying, number 67. When you're sowing, God will challenge you to memorize the word all throughout the day and memorize the word before you go to sleep. When you're sowing, God will challenge you. I mean, the spirit going to deal with your heart. Don't just go sleep. Think about something. Think about, think about something that I said. Let, let, your, let your heart linger here. And all throughout your day, sometimes people tell us, I'm at work. I can't, I can't read no script. Nigga, you weren't always at work. You, you, you had some portals. You, you, you ain't nobody at work like this. You, you got some portals. 
You got some portals. Life is full of portals. At number 67, God will challenge you to memorize the word throughout the day and before you go to sleep. Number 69, when you're sowing, God at one point will deal with your diet. When you're sowing, God at one point going to deal with your diet. If something is killing you, if something, number 68, if something is destroying you, if something is making your blood pressure high, your body malfunction, God going to deal with uh, your diet. Number 68, God going to deal with your diet. Because if we look at the word diet, look at the first three letters, die. So God don't want you to die before time. He wants you to enjoy yourself. So he's going to deal with your diet. Let's go to number 69. When you're sowing, God going to challenge you to exercise. And God going to place an exercising grace in your presence. Oh, Ravasa. You notice I didn't say put an exercising grace on you. Because see, God don't rape you. He a gentleman. He going to put it in your presence. So you're going to be able to take it up. Let's go to number 70. When you're sowing, you wear the spirit, the mantle, and the mindset of your apostle. The spirit, the mantle, the mindset of your apostle when you're sowing. Sowing is intimacy between you and your apostle mentally. Is intellectual. Sowing allows your apostle's mantle to work in you, sit on you, operate on you. And wherever you are, you'll have the same effectiveness as if the apostle was doing it himself. Number 71. Sowing allows you to go places that your apostle went. And allow you to take on the same accomplishment that he's currently carrying. When you're sowing, God going to let you take on the same crowns and promotions of your apostle. What I want you to catch here is that sowing lets your apostle's grace flow on you in your region for demons to respect you. Whenever you sowing. The apostles accomplishments, the apostles angels, the apostles mindset, the apostles ways start to saturate you, start bringing you into higher levels of looking at life, higher levels of operating in dominion. Sowing allows your apostles accomplishments, achievements, crowns, glories, uh, landmarks. Things that the apostle has entered into and have mastered, it'll start growing on you. Sowing allows your apostle to give you hair extensions. You know what hair extensions mean? Glory extensions. Oh my God. That means that glory get extended, get heightened, increase. It go further. You, you start hopping into things and God will talk to you so that you'll stay and flow with your apostle. Let's go to number 72. When you're sowing, you find a glory and power to never curse your king. Your king on earth. When you're sowing, you find a glory and power to never curse your king on earth. You'll never find yourself cursing your king. In Ecclesiastes, the word of God talked about don't curse the king. Don't curse the rich and don't curse the king. Don't curse him in your heart. The reason why Solomon did an excerpt on that, because he was dealing with honor. He was saying, do not allow yourself to have satanic activity. A curse is satanic activity. He was saying, don't allow satanic activity to enter inside of you against your king. 
All right, so number seven, two, this is what sowing does. It, you find a power and a glory to never curse your king. The spirit of disrespect is subdued. And love, compassion, and hospitality is renewed. You, you see that? Okay. Number 73, sowing allows the word of God to leave the pages and enter into your presence. Number 73, sowing allows the word of God to leave the pages and enter into your presence. So now you could read the word with the visibility of what's around you. When you look at Around your environment, you can see Psalm 103. He'll satisfy my mouth with good things. When you look at your high ceilings, you'll be able to talk. Uh, when you're driving your car, you don't see no cockroach running around the carpet. See, now you are operating in the word, leaving the pages and entering into your presence. Let me deal with number 74. Sowing sends the angel of the Lord to chase and also to judge your enemies. Listen to that. Number 74. Sowing allows the angel of the Lord to chase. I think that's Psalm 35 that talked about that. It's, it's one in Psalms, earlier text. Allows the, 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 the angel of the Lord to chase and judge your enemies. When you're sowing, you are sending forth the angel of the Lord to judge and chase your enemies. When you are sower, uh, what you have to catch is that when you're sowing, your enemies will be tormented the more you honor God because that angel, the Lord, is present to deal with people that mishandle you or are mishandling you. All right. So a sower is dangerous. Let, let me, let me, let me, let, ah! let me deal with number 75. Number 75 is so powerful because I want you to catch the people of God. When you are sowing, you become dangerous on earth. There is a light and there is a tangible glory that walks on earth with you wherever your feet treads. If somebody harms you, it might seem like they get away, but the glory of God is walking with you. I want you to see that number uh, 75, number 75, uh, sowing makes you dangerous. Sowing makes you dangerous. When you're sowing, anybody that want to fight with you, let them fight. They go, they, they need to see God in his true glory. So let them fight. You see what I'm saying? When you're sowing, you become dangerous. So, so that's why don't let nobody get you in the flesh and have you mess up what God wants you to say and mess up how God wants you to act. Because if they come up against you, let Pharaoh and his army come. God going to fight your battles. You, we got to get back to the scriptures. Let God fight the battle. We got to get back to this in real life. Not just talk about this. You got to get a recognition that when the enemy rise up against me, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord going to what? Raise the standard. The spirit of the Lord going to rise up and fight my battles for me. Somebody shout glory. God going to bring power on the scene to fight my battles for me. I just got to sow and release my seed. I just got to honor God. I just got to show him that I trust him. I ain't got to worry about no backlash. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. Everything on earth belong to God. Everything on earth belong to God. People belong to God. Places belong to God. Things belong to God. Money belong to God. Money! Come to me now. Everything belong to God. Health belong to God. Glory belong to God. Strength belong to God. Prayer, power, prosperity. Everything belong to God. Protection. Let's go to number 76. When you're sowing, you are engaging the Father for more closer and intimate fellowship. Number 76. When you're sowing, 
What we on? Number 76. When you're sowing, you're in, you're engaging God for more intimate and more closer fellowship when you're sowing. You take on a level of power. You start recognizing, uh, uh, I was created to be a friend of God. You start recognizing I was created to be his lover. I was created for him to hold me in his bosom and me to hold him in my bosom. I was created for this, to be his friend. I wasn't created to blaspheme. I wasn't created to live a sinful life. I wasn't created to do things that hurt his heart. I was created to worship him. Sowing is you engaging the father for a more closer and intimate fellowship. You notice I didn't say relationship. I said fellowship. Because what I'm talking about, conversation. Moving on from always being corrected and always being rebuked. And now we're dealing with you conversing with God. How are you doing? Are you okay today? How could I help you more, Lord? How should I deal with this? Are you okay with this person in my life? What, what you want to do? The reason why I walk with so much boldness, you know, the reason why I talk so hot, you know why I talk like this? I'm not fleshly. You know, I, I talk I talk a certain way for a reason because of the constant fellowship that I have with the father. And so I talk my chop and the father be the father be saying, talk, you talk. I can't really tell you what he tell me because it doesn't know your business. But the father be egging me on sometimes. Come on, come on, talk that, talk that, talk that, talk that. Because he enjoy me. You, you ever seen one of them uh, BFFs, they with their girlfriend and their girlfriend messy and she be egging her on? Well, well see, it's different with the father. When, when you obey him and you surrender all to him and you serve him and you bring him pleasure, he let you have your way. Because you dead. So, so it's really him flowing through you to operate in a raw demeanor. It's different. It's rare. It's unique. Number 77. Sowing releases God's judgment. Wherever you've been robbed, abused, or blindsided. Sowing releases God's judgment wherever you've been robbed, abused, or blindsided. Saints, I want you to catch this. Rob, abuse, blindsided. You know, blindsided is like dece deceived, where 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 you where where somebody tricked you out. When you're sowing, you release God's justice wherever you've been robbed, you've been uh, abused, you've been blindsided. Now, abuse could deal with even sickness, disease, pain, issues, infirmity in the body, stuff going on in the mind, emotional, depression, all that stuff, discouragement, weariness, lack, distraction, lust, uh, temptation, all that stuff. Let's go to number 78. When you're sowing, you're showing the Lord that he has now been given permission to share his lordship over extreme wealth with you. You, you, you're, you're, you're explaining to God, you're giving him permission that he could share his extreme wealth. He can make you a partner of his extreme wealth. That's number 78. When you're sowing, you allow God to make you a partner of his extreme wealth, his extreme wealth. And you come into a partnership. You're telling the Lord now, 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 uh, not only increase me, but trust me with that high place. Trust me with that place and where you abide. Trust me in that place where you live in, you dwell. All right? So, so when, you, when you are sowing, you're telling God, I'm giving you permission for you to share this extreme wealth with me, for you to share this extreme level of abundance with me. Let's, let's go to number 79. Sowing places are disrespectful abundance anointing on your life. <laughs> what we started off when I started this line? Weren't we on 38? 
Well, we on 38? No notes, no notes, no notes, no notes. You taking notes. No notes. 79. Look what, look, look what I'm saying here. Sowing, it places a disrespect for abundance anointing on you. Why? Because when Satan see you with abundance, Satan being disrespected, and you allowing other demons to see how weak and elderly Satan is. You, 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 ah, you showing demons that Satan is feeble. Maravaso, Rebeshoto. Sowing places a disrespectful abundance anointing on your life. And when demons see you in abundance, even they start second guessing Satan. Do you? How come you ain't stopping them, man? I thought you powerful. Well, you, you, come on. What you? Why? Why you ain't? Why they not broke too? The Kojic broke. The Baptist. The everybody broke. The, the, the Presbyterian. The, the Pentecostal. Why? Why they not broke too? And see, you disrespecting the Satanic Kingdom via abundance. You disrespecting the Satanic Kingdom via abundance. God places an abundance anointing on you when you're sowing. The grace for abundance is a grace that lets you have what you like in large measurements. It is a, an endless and increasing level of supply. Huh? Huh? Let's go to number 81. Let's, let's, uh, let's go to number 80. When you're sowing, you are taking the fear of God into a place in your soul where God could make you a distributor of third generation wealth. I want you to hear this. Make you a distributor of third generation wealth. Remember children's children? Huh? When you're sowing, you're, you're, you're taking that fear of God. The fear of God is, is, is like a lottery ticket. You know how you win the numbers? Well, the fear of God is like a lottery ticket. You won the numbers and now God give you riches. He gives you access to take care of the third generation. You going to have long money, which bring me to number 81. Uh, sowing allows you to open up your mouth wide. So God could feel it. I'm talking about Psalm 81 verse 10. When you're sowing, you allow God to open up your mouth wide. You, 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 you and, and feel your mouth. Now, saints, uh, your mouth represents what you will experience, what you will partake of. That's what your mouth is. You're digesting an encounter with the Father. When you're sowing, you're allowing God to open up your mouth wide so that he can feel it. I'm in 81, Psalm 81, verse 10. When you're sowing, God going to satisfy your mouth with good things, favorable things, pleasurable things, enjoyable things. That means that your experiences and your encounters are going to be likable. You're going to rejoice in them. Let's go to number 82. When you sowing, you become the Jesus in your family, according to the natural. You become the only one that if they want to come out, they're going to have to come through you. Meaning, whatever opened up your eyes, they're going to have to connect with it too. If they don't connect with it, you, are, you already know where they're going. And I mean, sometimes we try to act like we vague and we don't understand stuff. But it... When, when you saw him, you become the Jesus in your family. And if your family don't follow in suit of what opened up your eyes, what delivered you, what set you free, you already know where they're going. You, you ain't got to be confused. Oh, oh, well, my cousin, you know, she, she, don't, she don't understand what I'm in, but God got her over there doing something for him. And, and God, God using her, even though, she, even though she don't do what I'm doing, she don't understand me, and she don't understand what God doing in my life. God still, lose, God still using her, and God about to do something in her life, but uh, even, 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 even,
even though she even even though she don't know what God doing in my life over here, and she she not she not seeing everything that God doing. No, even though she don't see what God doing in my life, God about to do something in her life. Baby, God ain't about to do nothing in her life. She blind. When you're sowing, you become the Jesus in your family. You the one honoring God. You the one obeying God. You the one taking care of God. You the one got a reverence for God. And it was the path that you on. It is the leader that you submitted to that has opened up your eyes to see. When you are a sower, you become the Jesus in your family. When you are a sower, you become the one that if everybody want to come out, they're going to have to connect with, huh? Uh, they're going to have to connect with what you're doing to get out. And God do that on purpose. Remember, look at Moses. Wasn't Moses the Jesus in his family? Look, Moses is a sower. Look at every time God got angry. What did Moses say? Let's get a seed. Let's go honor God. He was sowing. Moses was the only way for his family to come out. Look at Miriam. Look at Aaron. Look, they didn't listen. Look, God, like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Moses is the only way for y'all to get out. Now, now, don't come talk to me, Aaron. I done picked Moses to be your prophet. He your God. He, he the one. You, you, he, he got the message. He got the commandments. He got the instruction. He got the authority. He got the wisdom. He got the light. Go listen. What he said, what he said, what he said, what he said, that's the only way you're going to come out. Whatever he said, that's how you're going to come out. You want to find a way that leads to life, you got to follow him. What we in, number 83? Sowing is not Old Testament or New Testament. Sowing is the first plan of God. Old Testament started when Adam sinned. A lot of people don't understand that. So somebody might hear, oh, you got to sow to get a harvest. And somebody might say, no, we in the New Testament. You ain't got to sow to receive no harvest. Dummy, Galatians 6 says, God is not mocked whatsoever man sow, if that shall he also reap. Sowing is not a part of New Testament or Old Testament. Sowing is the first plan of God. There was no testament. There was no testament. Sowing is how God started off mankind. It was his first instruction to man, which I want to emphasize in number 50, 84. Sowing is God's original request to man that was made in his image and likeness. The mystery of sowing is that this was the first thing that God wanted released out of a man. Seed. God said, this what I love the most, son. I made you in my image and likeness, but I'm going to pick this in your hand. This what I want to see coming out of you. And many people today, they claim that they love God. They claim that they love God. But you don't got this same tenacity in you. The first plan of God was I made you to sow into me. That's what God made man for. Sowing ain't got nothing to do with a preacher becoming rich. Sowing ain't got nothing to do with paying no church bill. Sowing is God saying, this is the first reason why I made you. I made you for this. I put sowing grace on you because I wanted to experience someone that would do unto me what I do all the time. Let's go to number 85. The mystery of sowing is that sowing is farming. It's God's favorite hobby. God's favorite sport activity is not tennis. It's farming. It's not even fishing. It's farming. What God loves is to farm. So he made a system. And when he made man, he said, if you follow my, my sport, my hobby, I'll make you rich. I'll let you enjoy what I have. Health, joy, peace, pleasure. I'll bring it to you. Let's go to number 86. Where you're sowing, 
the father going to cause you to become an expression of Abraham to those that you are assigned to. You're going to live out the life of Abraham. Because God has entrusted you because you have followed Abraham's pattern. So people are going to look at you and know this Abraham moving right here. This Abraham moving right here. This, that same Abrahamic covenant that was operating. Let's go to number 86. When you're sowing, God becomes your exceedingly great reward. That means that God's Whole intent is to impress you. Whoa, whoa. God want to wow you. He wants you to become so starstruck by him. So he done scheduled a series of events to blow your mind, to wow you, to, to, to cripple your worry. God paralyzes all your doubts and fears. When you're sowing, the Lord seeks to impress you and make you say, wow, I can't believe that I, I, I'm a daughter of the king. I can't believe that I'm called by God. I can't believe that he has chosen me and he loves me and he's intimate with me and he's one with me and he calls me by name and he speaks in my ear and he wakes me up daily and he gives me joy, gives me peace, protects me. When you're sowing, when you're sowing, when you're sowing, you're going to experience God as your exceedingly great reward. And his whole demeanor is to impress you. Let's go to number 88. When you're sowing, you shall receive the double. When you're sowing, you shall receive the double. When you're sowing, you shall receive the double. Let's go to number 90. When you're sowing, you're going to live in the hundredfold. Let's go to number 91. When you're sowing, you activate the thousandfold in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 11. When you are sowing, God going to keep on bringing you into brackets of provision, brackets, brackets of increase, brackets of overflow. And he's going to let you experience departments of his supplies, departments of his wealth, departments of his glory. See, when you're sowing, God going to let you see that there was no end to his provision. When you're sowing, God going to show you that there's nothing that he can't do. He's the God of more than enough. He's the God of increase. Huh? He's the God of financial overflow. He's the God where you will see money coming, working in your life. You will see supernatural money moving in your life. Miracle money. He's the God of financial miracles. He's the God of provisional increase. He's the God of more than enough. He's El Shaddai. He's Adonai. He's El Shaddai. He's Adonai. This is our God. Money coming to me now. This our God, he has more than enough. Everything is possible. Everything is moving in your favor. All things are working together for your good. Oh, my carava, so rebe. Mara, rebe sumba, rivi soros, jerebe sombo, ridi biantoro mokoya. Number 92, sowing is a level of life where money cometh will serve you and make you a public representative of God's economy. I want you to see this. Sowing will make money come and serve you, make you a public representative of God's economy. When you're sowing, God going to send you out to show forth his prosperity. Number 93, prosperity angels and the minister of finances, they have an extreme hunger to work for you when they see you engage in God's system of sowing. Number 93, 
when the, when, when, when the minister of finances, prosperity angels see you sowing, they want to work with you. They excited about moving in your life. They want to do something amazing for you because they long for somebody in the earth that will have strong sowing hands. Number 94. When you're sowing, money cometh angels. They surround your life day and night looking for a way to surprise you off of the father's command towards them. I'm going to say this again. Money come if angels, they look for a way to surprise you off of the father's commandment to them. The father is commanding them to surprise you. Sowing allows money come if angels to surprise you according to the father's command. Let's go to number 94. When you're sowing, God will start healing the trauma in your soul from dramatic experiences that happened in your past. When you're sowing, God will start healing your soul of dramatic experiences in the trauma and the pain and the wounds. Sowing allows God to do surgery on your wounded soul. Number 95. When you're sowing, God goes back to the years where you was a slave to sin, a slave to sickness, a slave to poverty. And he seeks to recompense you with back pay. There's a back pay scenery of God that he wants to recompense you with. Number 96. When you're sowing, the father is going to start seeing how deep in the sowing grace that you would allow him to take you because the deeper you go in sowing grace, the deeper you go in reaping grace. So God will, he will call you into the depths, the deep waters of sowing grace because that's going to be the deep waters of reaping grace that you're living. Number 97, when you're sowing, there is a supernatural wisdom to hear seed names. Number 97, when you're sowing, there's a supernatural wisdom to hear seed names. God will drop seed names on the inside of you. God will drop seed names on the inside of you. When you're sowing, there are seed names that's going to be dropped on the inside of you. Yield to those seed names. Not only name them in your seed, but proclaim them in your decree and praise God and rejoice over it. It's the totality of a manifestation at work. That seed name is a key into a financial door, a health door, a provisional door, a favorable door, a deliverance door. So take the name of the seed, sowing, the mystery of sowing, the miracle of sowing is this, that God provides for you higher, higher than the paycheck that you've been receiving normally. God will make a way that's greater. He'll cause side money to come to you. My caranda. That's what happened to my daughter, Annalise. Annalise. And see, um, Annalise, she's sewing and sewing. She sew all the time. She sew all the time. And, and, and side money coming to her. You see what I'm saying? Side money. Side money cometh to you. When you're sowing, my God, what, what we in? Number 98, number 98, number 98. When you sowing, you must recognize that the seed will not permit any devilish covenant relationship to exist with you, coexist with you any longer. 
When you're sowing, God going to tarnish everything that he did not build. Everything that he did not produce, he going to tarnish it. Just remember that. Number 99, sowing brings souls into the kingdom. When you honor in God, you're empowering the gospel to go forth in excellency. And number 99, when you sow in, you're bringing people out of the gates of hell. When you sow in, you are a soul winner. Number 99, when you're sowing, you are a soul winner. And God will bring you into increase, into abundance, and he'll also cause you to see the people that were also brought into the plan of God because of your seeds. When you're sowing, you must always remember that God is using those seeds to win somebody that's currently yoked up with demon spirits. You have to remember that every time you sow, you are empowering the anointing to reach somebody, the gospel, to touch somebody that been called into the liberty of Christ, but have not yet received him, known of him, walked with him. And you are the one that will get the reward, not only on earth, but in heaven, of what happened in that person's life. Sowers, let's go to number 100. Sowers, will be rewarded in heaven for people that was delivered by their honor. They propelled their man of God. They kept their man of God inspired. They blessed their man of God and their man of God was able to bless somebody and deliver somebody and set someone free because they was right there upgirding their man of God and keeping him in the flow of his vision to reach the loss. When you're sowing, you will be rewarded for all eternity. You'll be rewarded on earth too for the people that came out of the grip of the devil via you. 101, 101, 101, 101. We're on 101 now. We're on 101 now. Think about that. We're on 101 now. I want to say this. When you are sowing, Jesus can possess and hijack your body to have the same like behavior that he has in the spirit. When you're sowing, Jesus can possess your body to have the same like behavior, the same like conduct which he has in the spirit when you're sowing. You allow both you and him to operate in togetherness, synchrony, together. 